Hello, welcome back to the YouTube channel. I am Nick from Australia. Welcome to the Friday Night Football Review for Round 18 of the NRL. The first double header up at Seabus Super Stadium for the round. We've got two more games tomorrow at Seabus Super Stadium. Uh, tonight, we saw the Eels. They defeated the Gold Coast Titans up there. 26 points to 8. And we just saw the Seagulls defeat the Dragons. 32 points to 18. If you guys are new to the channel around here, make sure you guys um, like this video. Comment your thoughts on tonight's games in the comment section below. And um, make sure you guys tune in tonight at 11pm live on YouTube. Um, the Nick from Australia Late Night Footy Show will be on tonight instead of Saturday night uh, for this week. So make sure you guys tune in at 11pm for a for a good time. But um, let's, get into, let's get into the first game, man. Parramatta, 26. The Gold Coast, 8. Parramatta were in complete control majority of this game. Um, yeah, so let's get into it, man. So in the fifth minute, the Gold Coast looked like they were going to score the first try. Corey Thompson with a knock on, so no try to the Gold Coast in the fifth minute there. And then in the tenth minute, Parramatta was some just some great play. Ryan Madison with an offload to Dylan Brown. He goes straight through, outruns AJ Brimson, which I didn't think I would see, but... Dylan Brown out outruns AJ Brimson and scores for the Eels. Gutherson converts the goal because Mitchell Moses was ruled out uh, being wrestled for origin. So Parramatta go to a 6-0 lead after 10 minutes. And then in the 22nd minute, you could say it was a game changer, but I think it was the right decision. Kevin Proctor, Sinbin for dumping Isaiah Papali'i on his head. Proctor and um, Patrick Herbert both did it. Proctor copped it. Proctor went for 10 in the bin. I believe it was the right decision. It was unnecessary. He did not need to do it. So, I believe it was the right decision. Anyway, Parramatta went on a bit of a rampage when Proctor was in the bin. 24th minute, Sean Lane scores. He just sort of reaches out and scores a try for the Eels. Uh, Gutherson misses the kick there. Eels 10-0. 26th minute, Reed Money with a very nice try. Madison to Nathan Brown. Back to Gutherson. Gutherson, very unselfish, gets it on the Reid Marnie. He scores for the Eels, 16-0 Parramatta. 29th minute, Parramatta is still on fire here. Gutherson with an incredible banana kick there to Hayes Dunster. He scores in the corner. Gutherson misses the kick. Eels 20-0 after 29 minutes. Half time, Parramatta 20-0. I thought the Gold Coast were in a lot of trouble here. Parramatta were on fire. I know the Gold Coast were down to 12 men for a while there, but... You've got to be better in, in your scramble defence there. Just It just wasn't good enough from the Gold Coast. Anyway, in the second half, Parramatta, just more of the same. Ryan Madison scores for the Eels. Gavelson converts the goal. Parramatta, 26 points to nil lead over the Gold Coast. And, and then the Gold Coast decided to play some footy in the last 20 minutes or so there. In the 62nd minute, a try to Brian Kelly off a cutout ball from Ash Taylor. The only thing he's done in his career. And then... Uh, Patrick Herbert missed the conversion there. Eels 26-4. And then David Fafita scores a try there in the 67th minute. Paddy Herbert misses the goal again. And at full time, Parramatta beat the Gold Coast. Up at the Gold Coast. 26 points to 8. Look, I thought Parramatta were good in the first half. Second half, they were a bit clunky. They were a bit off the ball. I thought in the second half. I thought, you know, Parramatta had some really good players. And I thought, I thought Clint Gavison was outstanding. I thought Ryan Madison had a phenomenal game. I thought um, I thought Dylan Brown played really well. I thought the forward pack for Parramatta was good. I thought Green Campbell Gillard had a really good game. Isaiah Papalee had a good game as well. Nathan Brown was outstanding. I thought Sean Lane and Oregon Confuci off the bench for Parramatta were very good tonight. I also thought Hayes Dunster had a good game. Walker Blake looked dangerous. Sevo was okay, but a little bit quiet. Jacob Arthur came in for Mitchell Moses. He, he, did, he did a job. Nothing amazing, but he had a really strong game. You know, as for the Gold Coast, so some of their good players tonight, I thought, I thought Brian Kelly had a really good game. I thought he was one of the Gold Coast best tonight. I thought um, Tino Fasua Malawi was good. Fafita had a good second half, a terrible first half. I thought Maui Fodawaka and both Fermor were good for the Titans, but the Titans weren't, were not good enough. They were way off the ball tonight. Parramatta dominated from the get-go and they um, showed their class and they showed why they're a top four side. For, Par for, for Parramatta to win without Junior Pullo and Mitchell Moses is a very good thing, especially against a side like the Gold Coast who are very inconsistent. So 
a good win for the Eels tonight up there at the Gold Abbott Seabar Super Stadium. And we'll see how Parramatta go next weekend against the Raiders. But um, my top three players on ground for this one. I'm going to go number three. I'm going to go with Raiden Marnie. Number two, I'm going to go with Clint Gutherson. And number one, my man of the match. I'm going to go with Ryan Madison. I thought he had a fantastic game tonight, Ryan Madison. So he gets my man of the match and the Eels win over the Gold Coast Titans. And then the final game of Friday Night Football, which we just seen, it was the Seagulls beating the Dragons up there at Seabus Super Stadium on the Gold Coast as well. 32 points to 18. Now, if you guys watched my tipping video through the week, I did tip the Seagulls to beat the Dragons. So I'm pretty much two from two of my tips. I did change on Wednesday, or on Thursday, I should say, Thursday night, in the Rugby League Breakdown podcast when I found out that Turbo was out. But... It just goes to show that Manly can win without Turbo. So, good to see there. But it all started off there in the seventh minute. Good start for the Dragons. A great try there from Tyrell Salone. Josh Kerr with an offload. Ben Hunt with a ball to Jack Bird. He runs down the sideline. Inside ball to Tyrell Sloan. He scores the first try of the game. Jack Bird took over the goal kicking duties tonight. He converts for the Dragons in the seventh minute. 6-0 to the Red V. And then in the 13th minute... Ola Kawatu, one of the most young, promising back rowers in the game. He beats Corey Norman one-on-one, which would not be difficult in my opinion. And then he gets the ball on to Morgan Harper. And uh, Morgan Harper scores for the Seagulls. Gary converts the goal. Six all after 13 minutes. And then in the, in the 19th minute, again, the young the youngster, the young uh, the young back rower, Ola Kawatu, he scores off a nice try from the Seagulls. It was a bit of a it was like a set play, really. That right edge for the Seagulls was looking good. Ola Kawatu scores for the Seagulls. Garrett converts. Manly 12-6 after 19 minutes. And then in the 25th minute, of all people, I don't know who backed him in their multi, but Josh McGuire scores for the Dragons. A nice ball from dummy half from Andrew McCulloch. Great try from Josh McGuire. Bird converts the goal. 12 all after 25 minutes. It's looking like a game that could be like 30 all or 34, 32. But then in the 31st minute, uh, well, as, uh, Dragons, um, some, uh, someone ripped the ball out of Jack Bird's hands. Jack Bird takes a penalty goal in the 20, in the 31st minute. Dragons go out to a 14 12 lead. Half time, Dragons 14 12. They're looking pretty good there. And half time, the Dragons. And then in the 41st minute, basically the first, 40, first 45 seconds of the second half, Kieran Foran, a nice, um, it scores a great try. Shoots the game on the Moses Suli. Good footwork and speed. Good footwork and speed there from Josh Schuster. Gets it on the Moses Suli. Inside ball to Foran. Foran scores. Garrett converts. Manly 18-14. 47th minute. Cade Cust scores for the Seagulls. Now he raced out for the line. In my opinion, it was a very, very 50-50 um, call here. Personally, I believe Cade Cust dropped the ball. But here's the thing. If you play it in super, super slow motion, it's going to make it look good sometimes. If you play it in fast motion, it makes it look bad. So, oh, seriously, get rid of the super slow motion crap. It's an absolute joke. So, anyway, to try to Cade Cuss, Gary converts it. Manly, 24 points to 14. And then, in the 59th minute, Kieran Foran with a fantastic short ball to Brad Parker. who goes straight through a hole. Parker scores. Uh, Gary converts, Manly 30-14. to 14. And then, just when you think the Dragons are going to make another late comeback, in the 73rd minute, uh, Ben Hunt with a kick. The Dragons were about 70 metres away from the try line. He puts in a kick towards the sideline there. Tyrell Sloan flicks the ball back in. Gerard Bill scores. Bird misses the conversion. Manly 30-18. to 18. And then, in the 76th minute, Gary kicks a late penalty goal for the Seagulls. And at full time, Manly beat the Dragons. 32 points to 18 up there at the Gold Coast. I've got to say, it was a fairly good game of football. There were a couple of decisions that I weren't happy with. The six again rule was completely overused in this game. There was, you know, the six again rule tonight was in that Manly Dragons game was used in really, really poor times of the game and just momentum killers. So I thought that was a little bit disappointing from the officials. But Manly, I thought they were the better side. They deserved to get the job done. The Dragons were mine. Just too many errors, too many incomplete sets, a lot of frustration. Ben Hunt looked really tired from Origin 3. I don't know why he backed up. He should have had a rest, you know. I've got to say, though, like, 
The Seagulls winning without Turbo and DCE is a very good thing for them. Although the Dragons had a lot of plays out tonight as well. In the likes of Dufty and Ravalawe, Lomax, and uh, the list goes on and on. So look, you know, a good win for the Seagulls, but I don't think the Seagulls played that great. I thought they were very lucky in patches of that game tonight. I don't think Manly played anything unbelievable. Everyone's going to talk them up now saying how, how good they were without Turbo and DCE. But personally, in my honest opinion, I thought Manly were actually a little bit a, a little bit off tonight, but they got the job done. So, you know, they took advantage of the Dragons' poor errors and they ended up getting the win. But I don't think Manly were great by any means tonight. It was a good win for them, but it's definitely a win that I would not be able would not be that proud of, personally. But full credit to him. Some of the great players from the Seagulls tonight. Um, I thought Ruben Garrick played okay at fullback, but he needs to learn the pass when he's playing fullback. I thought uh, Morgan Harper and Moses Silly were very good. I thought Kieran Foran was outstanding tonight. Sister had a good game as well. Um, I thought Martin Tapao had his best game in a few weeks. Uh, Ola Kawatu was outstanding. I thought um, Kurt De Lewis. I can't pronounce his last name, but he had a fair game. I thought Tanella Paseca and Dylan Walker were quite good as well for the Seagulls. As for the Dragons, I thought Tyrell Sane was great at fullback for him. Jack Bird, I thought, was outstanding tonight. Uh, Gerard Bill played really well. He tried real hard. Um, Jack DeBellin, I thought he was outstanding. Uh, Josh Kerr had a fair game as well, I thought. And I thought Josh McGuire off the bench, I thought he was dynamite for him. McCulloch as well, but the Dragons... I wouldn't say it was a shock loss to them. They weren't, they weren't expected to win the game tonight. They weren't favourites by any means, but I think the Dragons will be a lot better when, when they get their full team back. It's just a matter of if they can get their players back, if they can get that full squad back in time for finals, if they can hang on to that top eight spot. But I, I guess we'll see what happens in the coming weeks for the Red V. But, you know, the Dragons were poor tonight, but I think they'll be okay. I think they'll, they'll bounce back soon, and, and that should be... That should be fine, but my top three players on ground tonight for the Seagulls Dragons game. I'm going to go with number three. I'm going to go with uh, Josh Schuster. Thought he was great. Number two, I'm going to go with Ola Kawatu. And number one, my man, the matchup, I'm going to go with Kieran Foran. Thought he was outstanding tonight, Kieran Foran. So he gets my player of the match. But if you guys enjoyed the Friday Night Football review, make sure you guys go ahead and like. Comment and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you guys at 11 o'clock for the Nick from Australia late night footy show. Come in, say hello, it'll be a good one. See you then.